Welcome to the mentorship today. Good to see you all here. And we are going to talk today about uh, some of the trades we took in the trading room because I think there are several things that uh, I would like to discuss there. Uh, some things uh, that uh, I believe that, uh, well, you may have some questions regarding some of the trades we took, so feel free to ask questions. Uh, that's the whole idea of the mentorship. You can ask questions. I would be happy to answer. And uh, I start with um, with um, the trade in TAL. You may remember this trade. If you took it uh, with me, I don't know. But uh, basically, I want to discuss a few points about TAL trade. Well, um, the first thing uh, to notice about TAL, hold on a second. There's one more thing I want to see here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was missing something. Okay, TAL started with a 10% uh, gap down. So that's a huge gap down with TAL. Now, the way I trade my um, uh, usual kind of trades, which are a gap and go trades, I look for trades which are down more than 3% and TAL was certainly one of my uh, major candidates for today. So it gap down I think it was 9% when it gapped down. Initial move, these are one minute candles. Initial move was down, therefore I had no chance of uh, trading it in the first few minutes. That's the first uh, two minutes it came down. Always looking for a pullback. I'm not going to get into the details of how I trade my gap downs because that's what we do in different lessons. But basically I always look for a stock that's starting with a big gap down, continues to come down, or moving up doesn't matter and then reverses i always look for the reverses for the reversal i i look for the for the time where it moves up fails and comes down that was the point i can't remember where exactly i believe it was 33 90 or 80 where i posted it in the room and took it for short that's the point where i i, I expect it to fail and i expect it to continue lower and as you can see that was uh, one of my major winners today so uh, TAL behaved quite as I expected, but that's not what I wanted to discuss today. What I wanted to discuss today is the point where I added more uh, to TAL trade. Not only that I added more, I doubled my size in TAL. So everything was discussed, of course, in the trading room. I discussed the fact that I shorted it and posted it and then discussed the fact that I'm going to add and then adding. Uh, the adding point in TAL was right over here. And I need you to take a very close look at what I'm going to show you right now. So look at this one minute candles. You've got one, two, three, four, five, and then the six came down. It's very hard to notice this if you're watching five minute candles. Very hard to notice it. You should make decisions usually based on five minute candles, but sometime specifically on one minute candles, you will see more. So the, the way to solve this is really just to switch in between five and one minute candles, especially when I'm talking about the first few minutes. These are the first 15 minutes of the trading day. This is, this is 9.45 here. Now, what is so special about this is I'm going to click each candle and you take a look at what is the low of each candle. Now this candle's low is 33.70. You can see it here. Look for L for low. So I'm clicking again. LO says 33.70. That's the low of this candle. Now I'm going to the next candle. Second candle. 33.70. I'll take the, sec the third candle now. It's a small red candle. 33.70. I'll go to the fourth candle. 33.72. Very close. I go to the fourth candle, or actually the fifth now, 33.70. So what you were seeing here is the stock clearly getting some support at 33.70. Now, you are familiar with support and resistance. There's nothing new about support and resistance. I guess you, you all know about it. But one of the most important uh, things in trading is to trade and to find these intraday supports and to trade them and to know their value. Now, when you see something so clear, that is very valuable. 
The reason it's very valuable is because it's holding very close to the support. It's consolidating very closely to the support. What does it mean? It means that the sellers are pushing down. They're not allowing it to move up. It keeps down. Now take a look at between the high and the low of each candle. Again, I'm going to click on this candle here, the second candle. The low is 70, the high is... No, I clicked the wrong candle. Wrong. Yeah, the low is 70, the high is 82. Next candle. Low is 70, high is 76. Next candle. Low is 72, high is 76. Next candle. Low is 70, high is 81. So this stock keeps in, bit, in around 10 cents from what is the support. It's quite a mover because 70 is here. If you just go back a little bit, that would be 34, 17 or 20 almost. So that's 50 cents. That's 50 cents over here. And it really is holding within a range of approximately 10 cents from the support, a very clear support, and uh, the bounce. So really, if you take a good look at this, uh, at this talk, you're, you, you're seeing that the sellers are very, very, very um, active here. They are, they are very strong. They are holding the stock down. They are very aggressive. The buyers are also very aggressive. The stock is holding for five minutes. Now, if you take a look at today's volume, now I can see what it was back then, but most of the volumes during the first few minutes, really. So 17 million shares, 17 million shares, and most of the volume was really here. So that was probably around 5 million shares by that time. So really what we're seeing here is a very, very clear support, a very clear uh, aggressiveness of the sellers. And that means that that is a great opportunity to add more size. I doubled my size here. The, the, the end result in TAL uh, today was a great trade over $2,000. And that was because I doubled my size really on that uh, particular spot. So it's very important to realize that once you trade a stock, it's not only about the the first, the first entry, the, the first entry in the, in, 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 the, in the trade. The first entry is very, very important. That's where it's very, very dangerous. But then when the stock is coming down and showing you a um, reason to, head, to add more size, to add more size, that would be the point where you could and probably should add more size. Now, when I'm talking about adding more size, I doubled my size. Does it mean that you should double your size? No, but let's say you traded 400 shares. How about adding another 200? Maybe adding another 400. Not all trades are created equally. Some trades you want to add, some trades worth it, some don't. The biggest money in trading comes from stocks where you have an advantage, a clear advantage. You realize that you have an advantage and then you add. Does it always happen? No. Sometimes you get into a trade and the, you know, the train already left the station. Uh, let's say you moved into TAL and you're already here and it's just coming down. Will you chase the price down? No, you won't. That would be wrong. That would be uh, wrong according to the trading rules. That would be wrong according to what you should do as a trader. But should you look for points of advantage? Yes. What happens if you find a point of advantage? I would definitely say double down. If you have an advantage, the train did not leave the station yet, very close to leaving. You have a very, very clear support, a very nice consolidation within a range of 10 cents. Sellers are very aggressive. No reason why you shouldn't Ed, if you have any questions about the tra this trade, let me know. But that was a beautiful breakdown after the point of adding. Now, you may argue that this should have been my original point of entry. Absolutely, yes. It should have been my original point of entry. I shouldn't have entered here. But that is only after looking back at the trade. I couldn't know that. 
there was, I had no idea when I shorted it at somewhere around 33, 80 or 90, I'm not sure. When I shorted it at that area over here, I had no idea it's going to come down and consolidate near this area. I had no idea there was a big buyer, there's no other reason, a big buyer waiting for the stock at 33.70. I couldn't know that. As it happens, it did have a big buyer over there. As it happens, it showed you a very, very nice consolidation pattern and gave you the chance to add to a winning trade. That's what was so great about TAL. Really, it was a great pattern where you should have added. Now, let's continue talking about uh, other trades. If you have any questions, I will be happy to return to that. Um, a stock I hated to trade today was uh, Kerr. I mean, I hated to trade. It was certainly one of my winners, uh, up $800, still riding 200 shares. It's the only one I still have open because I'm, I'm taking the... Um, I'm taking the stop price down um, every few hours or so and then I keep following it and I still have 200 shares riding this stock, the only one that I'm still riding. But uh, it wasn't a big, a, a big winner because I was uh, quite uh, happy to take a partial after it uh, finally went down. But if you go back and take a look, once I moved into the trade, it just started consolidating. Now I want to talk to you about something that has to do with a long consolidation. A long consolidation. Not all consolidations are the same. You know, if I'm thinking about a stock, let me cover it for a second. Okay? Before it decided to move down. I'm just covering it. So you don't see the, the rest. Well, of course, you know it came down. But uh, let's just say we have this. If I'm looking at a stock that looks like that, you may remember I complained several times today that uh, care is not moving. Well, it came down to the lows. I was expecting it to break down on the lows. It did not. Then came down again. I was expecting it to come down again. It did not. And then moved up. And then it came down again. Well, finally it did. But the thing is, that's not a stock to be trusted. That's a stock that just goes sideways. There's two rules to that. These two rules I want to discuss right now. Rule number one. When something like this happens, stay away. Meaning, if you moved into a trade, move out. Move out. Don't stay. Then I'm going to answer why, I'm, I'm going to tell you why I did stay. That's rule number two. But usually, when you've got something like that going, there's no reason to stay. That's just betting on the red or black in the casino. If you bet on the black or red in the casino, you've got a 50-50 chance. Well, maybe you've got the whites too. Let's think you know the white in the roulette. Okay, so you've got a 50-50 chance here whether it's going to go up or going to go down. So why did I stay in that trade? Well, I said that also several times in the trading room today. The reason I stayed, that's rule number two, is because the stock was down 10%. Actually, no, 19? Sorry, hold on a second. I think Kera was down 19%. No, 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 it's only down 12% now. So it must have been like 10% uh, or so too. Let's see. Well, it doesn't matter. Okay, so it came down uh, $24 yesterday, 26 Yeah, that looks more like a 10, 12% or so. So the stock finally did come down. I was hanging to it just because of one reason. The reason I was hanging to care, I hated it. I mean, it was the only trade I didn't get a partial. I mean, the rest of my trades, I already got a nice winners and the only one I was waiting for was Kerr. I, and I was down a bit. I mean, when we moved in somewhere around here, actually exactly here, I remember this candle. You remember this candle? That was, again, the right candle, the right pattern. A stock that is gapping down 10%, uh, moving up, looking for a reversal, getting into a trade, gap and go, looking for a failure that it will come down. Well, it did, just it took a longer time. But that was the right place to enter. And look at the first, re the first move down was great. I loved it the minute I clicked, I clicked the button. But then it returned. And then it went sideways. And the fair question is, why did I keep holding to that trade? Well, the reason I kept holding to that trade uh, was only because the stock was down 10% or even more. 
When the stock is down 10%, depending now on maybe a third rule, when the stock is down 10%, you do not expect it to come higher. You do not expect it to move higher. Especially when it's stock like Kera. I mean, what's special about Kera? I don't need to take a, a, a big look at, uh, an in-depth look at that. Just look at the name. Terra Therapeutics. I mean, what does it say? Pharmaceutical? These stocks are up and down. Fear and greed is riding those stocks every, almost every day. This stock could double their price in a day or crash down by 50% in a day. This one came down today more than 10%. And with a stock like that, fear rules. Stocks down 10%, fear rules. What are the chance that a stock like that, and again, I'm going to the black and red here. So you've got the black and red chance, which is 50-50%. But if you add to it two things, first, the name of the company, pharmaceutical company, and second, the fact that the stock is down 10%, you probably got yourself a winner. It's down 10%, it's probably going to continue down. Is there a chance it will move higher and kick you out and then come down? Of course, that's a part of the game. But the main thing is really, you're going to get a winner more than 50%. So that's not a 50%. Now, if this pattern would have happened here, let's say I went short Kera here at yesterday's close, even a bit under, let's say 1% or 2% under. If that would have happened here, I should have moved out of the trade. And doesn't matter if it's trending lower or trending higher, if I go long or if I go short. If I see a pattern like that, if you see a pattern like that, don't hold to it. One of the hardest things is to leave a trade before you get a, a profit or at a small loss. Or at a small profit, doesn't matter. At a small profit, you don't want to go out because you're already in profit and you think it's going to continue, but it's just really going sideways. And five minutes from now, you're going to be down a few cents. Now you're up a few cents. My best, my best advice to you guys would be get out of the trade. doesn't matter if you're up a few cents or down a few cents. That requires a lot of discipline. Do I have this discipline? No, I don't. So why am I teaching you this? Because my way of solving my inner demon's problem is reducing my size dramatically. I want to stay, I, 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 let's say, and again, I'm not talking about the case now, I'm talking about what happens if Kara would have been here, okay? If Kara would have been there, and I need to go out, as I just mentioned, it's just going sideways, my way to fight my inner demons, one demon that says, you know, you're going to click the button and you're going to move out and a minute after you're going to click the button or a second after you're going to click the button, it's going to shoot higher. Let's say I went long. And my other demon says, yeah, well, you remember the last time that happened to you, it, it, it actually took you out in a few minutes later. It just spiked up a little bit and took you out or down a little bit and took you out and you just lost money where you shouldn't have because you should have moved out of the trade. That's my demons. The way I solve my problem, I find it hard for me, and it's probably for you too, to leave a trade which I trusted when I moved in. So I'm waiting. I'm, I'm already, I feel like I'm working in this company for the past hour. It's not going anywhere. But I, I have some relationship with it. I'm waiting for something to happen. <laughs> my way to solve this, let's say I went in 400 shares. I'm not going to talk about my 4,000. Let's say I went in 400 shares. Sell 200, maybe sell 300. Leave yourself something, just if you're right. I mean, the right thing to do really is to sell all 400. Seriously, I'm not joking. I do have personal issues with that. Not joking, seriously, I do. And probably the best thing to do is just give up and go away. Well, I do that sometimes, but you will see me, more often you'll see me uh, selling a vast majority of my shares and just leaving something funny for just that in case it's going to come up or down. Usually I would sell it at a loss of a few cents, maybe even 10 cents, 
then I would have a few hundred dollars loser depending on my quantity of course and then I would keep let's say 400 shares which is a small very small size for me and if it's going to move down let's say half a dollar or so then I'm going to or up uh, I'm going to cover my my initial small uh, loss so uh, that's my way of handling stocks that are just going sideways it doesn't necessarily have to be your way my best suggestion to you is to do what I don't do is uh, in fact move out of the trade but again be fair with yourself take a look and ask yourself do you really know what's going on do you really know where the stock is going to go do you really know if it's going to come down or up be fair with yourself the only reason why you should have left uh, your position in Kera is because it's down 10% I did and I gained that's an important tool when it's down that much if it wasn't down that much go away doesn't matter if you have a small loser or if you have a small winner just please go away don't stay no reason for you to stay and um, so uh, Kara was a winner um, at the same time okay I have some questions here let me see I was not in the room today what was my entering care Hold on. well it's a bit tricky now to look for my you know what I am not gonna do that I, I, I think it was here $24 but I'm, no actually I remember it was under $23.90 I posted it under $23.90 I missed it initially it spiked up a bit and I joined at 80 something $23.90 I remember that it was down 9% the opening Carlos thank you very much Carlos it's harder for me to take a small loss but I'm getting better <laughs> yeah Philip that's exactly what I'm talking about it's consolidating there's a small loss you know again the, the way to solve this problem is to just dramatically lower your size that's how I handle it Philip I think you could do it too <laughs> babysitting is worst <laughs> that's a good one Paulina <laughs> <Mighty enough. laughs> oh good one uh, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll talk about uh, Tesla no problem uh, before Tesla I want to talk about the trade I didn't take today it was Boeing actually let's take a look at that, that uh, five minute candles okay sometime today I was asked whether we should go long Boeing I think it was somewhere around here if I remember correctly it was somewhere oh no 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 no! I was asked whether we should go short Boeing if it's going to reverse I'm not sure exactly where it happened somewhere around here or maybe somewhere around here I'm not sure I was asked today in the trading room whether we should go short Boeing now Boeing came down dramatically very very nicely uh, reversed that probably if it would have came down here would have looked like a very interesting and again let me cover that because you're not supposed to be seeing what came next but let's just say this is the behavior of, of Boeing and I was asking the room maybe over here uh, about shorting Boeing and my answer was no the reason my answer was no shorting Boeing is because Boeing is a very very well known company and when Boeing is coming down dramatically just like that and pulls back up don't trust stocks like that to continue their journey down don't trust them to continue their journey down because there will be a lot of people who would love to buy companies like Boeing when they're down that much so again I could expect Boeing to continue consolidating would it be a good idea to go long Boeing no because the stock is down 4% you shouldn't go long would it be a good idea to go short no the only place to trade a stock like that is at the start if you have a chance not sure that you got a chance if you had a chance if you had a nice consolidation let's say take a look at my the way I trade no there was no way for me to trade Boeing today no way for me to trade Boeing today I mean it was possible I mean the, it, it could have been possible maybe I mean based on the results of course it could have been traded here but that was 
way too dangerous. Look at the first crash in Boeing. Again, a big company crashes down, uh, comes back up. Don't trust it to continue. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. The best idea, don't do it. Just don't do it. Big companies are expected to go sideways. Expected to go sideways. And Boeing is doing just that. Just that. So Boeing's just going sideways. I don't see anything anything I, I, I would do with Boeing after the initial move down. And of course, the initial move down, I don't think we had a chance. So again, that would not be something that I would uh, consider taking. There was another one, PTC, and it's, it's almost the same thing. Now, if you watch PTC, it's not as well known as Boeing, of course, um, but the stock is down 19%. The stock is down 19% and the initial move was down. It was very, very strong. And then it came up and just went sideways. Now, the question I was asked in PTC was whether we should go long. Why was I, why, why was anybody, and I was asked here, this one I know for sure. I was asked here whether we should go for, for take, take PTC long. Why would anybody ask me a question like that? The stock is down 19%, 19.8 right now, almost 20% down. Why would anybody with a clear mind ask me whether we should go long a stock that is down 20%? Well, the reason is quite simple. We all get drawn to something, we are attached to something that could pull back dramatically. When the stock is down 20%, there's a lot of novice traders who would love to go long. I mentioned in the room today that if you take 100 trades like this, probably 60 of them will be losers, maybe even 70. Why? Because the stock that is down 20% is not likely to continue higher. Whether it's going to crash down to a new low, I don't know. But certainly, look at PTC. That would have been one of the 70% or 60% that would have failed. Look, if this person took it long over here, then it came down and it was down maybe one point. And then green candle, maybe he took it again and it was down again. And then a green candle, he maybe took it again, it was down again. Another green candle, maybe he took it down and it was down again. How many times could he be, he or she, be stopped out in PTC today? One of the worst losers you can get is in stocks which are big movers. I mean, certainly stock is down 20%. You would expect it to move up and down several points. So that's why people are drawn into this trade. I know why they're drawn into this trade. I've been there. I've done that. I lost enough money to tell you about it. So I'm here to tell you that doing this for several years cost me a lot of money and I don't want you to do the same mistake I did. I don't want you to ride a stock that is down 20% long just because you think there's a good chance it's going to pull back up strong. Yeah, look at this crash over here. All red candles. Where exactly can you take it? How far would it move from the lows here? How far will it come down again? Would it come down on the lows? Would you add to a losing trade? There's so many things that could happen here. Now, of course, you can take a look at the way it moved here and it looks to you, maybe you could have a nice winner, but you could also need quite a substantial stop loss. So if you're not using at least one to one risk award, could be losing money. So again, uh, never, you know, the, the, I, I, my best advice, just, just don't look for longs in stock that is down 20%. Look for longs in stocks that are up today, trending higher. Find a nice entry point. Try to go along a stock that is trending higher. Don't try to go long a stock that may move dramatically higher because it's down 20% and crash down at the beginning of the trading day. And again, it draws you in. I remember again being at that position. I remember being at that point where I was trading these stocks. It was extremely, extremely difficult. Now, I'm not saying there aren't systems of doing that. There was... Uh, uh, a trader in my trading room, which I often tell his stories, not, I'm not going to get into details today, but this guy was uh, specializing in finding stocks like that. And I remember, years ago, it was many years ago, I remember asking him, he still trades, <laughs> he's a neighbor of mine, <laughs> uh, and this guy 
was very special in finding stocks that crashed down dramatically. But, you know, sometimes I would ask him, what do you think about going long PTC? And he may say, yes, great, if it moves over this level. And then I would take a look at something that looks quite similar and I would ask him, what do you think about going long in this particular stock, which is different than PTC? And he says, absolutely not. He had his reasons. He was specializing in this. If you want to spend the next two years exploring why you should go and where you should go long PTC, go ahead, do that. I'll be happy if you'll be in my trading room and I could consult you whether I should go long or short this stock. But it requires an in-depth specialty. It requires a lot of knowledge. You can't just come into the room and just go long a stock that is down 20%. You want to learn more about it? Learn about it. Look at the next uh, patterns. Every day you've got a few stocks like that. Well, not every day, but a few times a week you probably have. You had probably two or three like that today. Learn about it. Really, make a print screen. Come out with the idea where you should move long. Look for the volume changes. Look for the pattern. Look for different issues. This guy was exploring that issue for two or three years, I believe, before I could have trusted him to consult me whether I should or shouldn't go long a stock that crashed down. And again, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's extremely hard and there's so many easier things to do. So why should you do that? There's so many other things you should do before doing that. You want to specifically specialize in that? Go ahead, be my guest. Help us in the trading room in the next two years, but it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you a lot of money until you learn how to do that correctly. Let's see if you get more questions till now. You do. I'm going to talk about Tesla, yes. Unless uh, well-known companies are, are gapping more than 5 or 6% uh, of the time, right? I'm not sure what you're asking this about. Carlos must have been something I was talking about earlier. So in relations to what? Oh, if that's a well-known company and it's gaps down, like if, if it wasn't PTC, I get your question. If that wasn't PTC, if that was, for example, BA, and you're asking what would have happened if BA is down 19%. Well, tell you what. Uh, could be, yeah. Could definitely think about going long in the range of companies where you could possibly consider that BA would probably be there. Yes, you could. But I would say this. If I would have gone long, let's say BA, it's not just watching it moving up for the first time. Let's say BA was down 20%. I would probably look for a pattern like this. Okay, look at this pattern here, see? And then maybe if it comes in the third time and moves higher, then I would have trusted it. Something like this. So it's not just a stock like BA that crashed down. It's a stock like BA that crashed down and then comes up with a nice technical pattern. If it comes up with a nice technical pattern, let's discuss this in the room why it happened. Well, you've seen me taking some of these trades very rarely. Very, very, very rarely. No, no, I didn't see Roland, the guy with Twitter, on Twitter, no. <laughs> take a look. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. No idea. Let's take a look at uh, Tesla. Well, tell you what, uh, Tesla is my biggest winner today. If I just take a look again at my account manager. So, and um, earned quite a bit on Tesla today. How, 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 what part? That's like 5% of, of a new Tesla or so. <laughs> something like that. joking I earned nicely on Tesla today when I came into the trading day today you you may remember I said I'm gonna have today either a big losing day or a big winning day 
Um, end result for me today will not end till now, but uh, over $13,000. So I'm having a great day today, and I knew I'm going to have that. And one of the reasons I knew I'm going to have that is because I was watching the pre-market gaps, and I've seen so many amazing gaps and that was just absolutely amazing. I felt like I said to Scott when we started out, I felt like a kid in a candy store. I just needed to pick up my candies. And they were all over the screen. One of them was Tesla. I knew that was happening before trading session started. In fact, one hour before the trading session started, I, I, I took a look at the gap downs today and I was watching this and I was amazed. And I was saying to myself, oh my God, this is going to be a very interesting day. I knew it's going to happen mainly to stocks like Tesla and specifically Tesla. I mean, Tesla was on my radar. Tesla was on my radar for several reasons. Uh, firstly, I mean, Tesla's down 13% today. Second, uh, my opinion was that Tesla is going to continue coming down much lower. When, you know, several months ago, we talked about Tesla coming down to 200 and that finally did happen. And then it surprised me quite a lot by moving up to 260. I didn't trust that. I know what's going on with Tesla. Everybody knows what's going on in Tesla. Everybody knows Tesla's losing money. Everybody knows Tesla has a, maybe, I hope, a bright future, but not likely. I mean, everybody's starting to produce electric cars today and stuff like that. So you don't have to be a genius to understand that Tesla is probably in trouble. And the only way uh, Tesla is going to be saved if the stock is going to come down to $20 and GM is going to buy it or other company, whatever. So Tesla, you know, the way it moved up, I didn't like it. Starts with a gap down of uh, 10% or so. It was bound to come lower. I also mentioned I'm going to be forgiving Tesla today. So I was planning to go short Tesla today and giving it some space, meaning if I wouldn't be successful in trading Tesla today, I knew I would take a bigger than usual stop loss, take a big risk, because even if Tesla is going to spike me out of the trade, it's probably going to come down later. So I was ready to the game with Tesla and I had my game plan. I knew what's going to come up with Tesla. I was expecting Tesla to behave in a certain way. I'm very happy to say that it did not have to test me. It did not have to test me. It was a perfect formation for me to trade today. Tesla came down, huge gap down. Here's the green candle. I always look for a green candle. Here's the green candle. He tried to move higher and failed, waiting for it to come down. Uh, short entry, if I remember correctly, that was 234, 233, I'm not sure. Something like this. So short entry was somewhere over here at the third red candle, and it came down. And then happened something that was a little bit uh, like uh, TAL, but not quite the same, where it had a beautiful breakdown formation. And then I noticed after taking a partial, TAL was before taking a partial. That's why that's a big difference. I moved into TAL, then it moved down slightly, then it had a beautiful breakdown formation, and then I added to DL, TAL, actually doubled to TAL. However, with Tesla, I took the trade, I took the partial, it moved up, then it had a beautiful breakdown formation under 230, and look at what happens. So Tesla trade was adding to a winning trade after taking a partial, and when I do that, I always add smaller size. The reason I add smaller size is because I never want to get back to red territory. However, today I started with quite a large, quite a large size with Tesla and then added half of it, which still was a very large size. But I also mentioned in the room, I'm going to use it as a quick in and out. It was quick. I was expecting $1, I got $150. So uh, it came down very nicely. Uh, first trade was right. Second trade was right. I'm so happy I didn't need to be tested with Tesla today um, because I was prepared to have a fight with Tesla today. I was prepared. I was expecting Tesla to come down today no matter what. If, if, even if it's going to move up a bit, then probably come down. Now again, a very well-known big company. Why would I add to a trade where the company is coming down? I mean, wouldn't you consider that just like Boeing? 
I mean, why didn't I want to add to Boeing or even take the Boeing trade as it comes down, but I do take the Tesla trade because not all trades are created equally. I was prepared to Tesla because the daily, because the fundamental. And that's one of the nice things about trading. You don't always have to use just the technical formation. When I started out as a trader many years ago, 20 years ago almost, I, I was 100% technical. I'm no longer 100% technical. A lot of my decision-based mechanism is regarding fundamental. I mean, Boeing is a big company. People would love to buy it when it's down. Is that fundamental or technical? It's definitely fundamental. Uh, Tesla, what I think about the company, what I think about what's going to happen, what I think about its products, its competition, that's a part of my decision-making. A big part of my decision making. I, I, I usually say that 20% of my decision making is fundamental, 80% is technical. That is true uh, in 100 trades, but in a trade like Tesla today, that was probably 50 50. Boeing, I don't know, but I didn't trade Boeing. So with Tesla today, a major part of my decision was really fundamental trading. And then the technical was adding at that point here, that was purely technical at 2.30. Well, not again, not purely technical, because again, I was expecting Tesla to fail today and then continue down from fundamentalism. That's why I took the first trade. That's why I took the second trade. Glad to say it didn't have to test me. Uh, that's all I wanted to say today. Um, I'm taking a look at your questions here. And of course, if you have more questions, let me know. Uh, <laughs> y y okay, so what is Chupa Chips? Is that a candy? Am I missing something? Sean, is that a candy? You're writing that I was in a candy store and that's a, like candy something. I have no idea what's written on my, on my shirt. Never had any interaction with Chupa Chips. Lollipop? <laughs> I don't know where I bought this sh shirt or who bought it for me or <laughs> why am I wearing something that says Chupa Chips? No idea. So, okay, I found out. Great. <laughs> a kid in a candy store. That worked out fine today. <laughs> Didn't, didn't plan that, didn't plan that. If I believe or not in Elon Musk, well, I'll tell you what, the guy is definitely a genius. He made billions. I wish I was him. <laughs> I mean, what am I to him? Who am I to criticize, criticize him? I mean, the guy is definitely uh, probably one of the uh, world's biggest genius. Can a genius like that could go bankrupt or his companies? <laughs> Definitely. I mean, the guy is playing with fire every day in his life. Uh, he probably have very interesting life. And again, if I would uh, choose somebody in the world to exchange my life with, I mean, maybe him, <laughs> maybe somebody else, but... Uh, I, I do not, I don't, I do not, uh, I, I wouldn't say I would, don't believe in it. I'm just saying if I need to buy his shares, that's a different issue. There's a big difference between believing in the guy and buying his shares. Hey, really, it's a company in Barcelona. Okay. How do I work out your, my exits? I mean, like, which trade? I, I need to know, give an example, I mean, um, as I mentioned, for example, I'll tell you what, I mentioned earlier Tesla, okay? So I said, I'm going to give Tesla a little bit more space. So more space means, again, fundamental. It's not technical. So usually I would have my stops and targets as a one-to-one -one risk reward. Not today. Not in Tesla, I mean, specifically in Tesla. In other companies, that would be one-to-one -one risk reward. So the answer to your question, probably the answer to your question, if I understand your question correctly, is uh, I'm just going to 
usually do it by one to one risk reward. How did I decide my entry to Tesla? Well, again, if I'll go back, oh, hold on a second. Oh my God, I missed my, oh, shoo. Trading session is over. I left 200 shares in care. Hmm. Well, I do have my phone to remind me that I'm supposed to move out, but I don't know why I didn't drink. I just saw something blinking right now, but it did not drink. My iPhone just cost me something today. Well, I don't know. Let's see what happens tomorrow with Kera. Not necessarily, but I was supposed, I always have a, a timer ringing five minutes before the trading session is over, uh, just to, you know, check out whether I want to stay or not. Actually, let me just say if I could have left something, that was a right decision to leave something. Actually, yeah, look at Kera. It finishes at the lows. When the stock is finishing at the lows, I, I, I'm not sure I would have left anything, but it finishes at the lows. And that means it's likely to gap down even further tomorrow. So I should be okay with the 200 shares I left. Well, let's see tomorrow once we open. So how did I decide upon my entry in Tesla? Well, um, not according to five minute candles, because you can see here that there was no entry according to five minute candles. But if you go to one minute candles, you can see that it gapped down. I always look for a green candle, failure to move higher. This one moved over the highs, you see, and then a reversal. That's it. A very clear technical reversal. That's it. Nothing special, though. really nothing special. Though. Yes, I did enter above. I think it was 233 or 234. I'm not sure. Probably 233 or even lower. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I moved in and then took my partial and then added. I had 400 shares and I added. So I added another 2,000 shares to 400 shares. That's what happened today in Tesla once it move to a new law. So I went up from 400 to 2400. Amazon's coming down. Okay. That would be interesting for tomorrow. <laughs> well, we are in um, in the quarterly reporting season. So that's, that's why everything is moving so fast. Um, yeah, Filipino, uh, I mean, technically speaking, uh, Kera, when it finishes at a new low, at, at the lows, um, going to, you're going to have, at the beginning of the next trading day, you're going to have automated stops. Usually, that would usually drag it down. Now, the way to trade, uh, you know what, let me, let, let it be the last thing I, I want to discuss today. The way to, if, if I'm left with uh, 200 shares, uh, in uh, in Kera, there's two ways to handle that. You wait for the first five minute reversal, or better, the right way to do it, you wait for the first 30 minute reversal. That would be the right way to do it. So um, Kera, let's say, starts with a gap down, and then let's say Kera is dramatically moving higher. You wait for a 30 minute reversal. You put your stop above it. If I'm short, of course, I put my stop above it. If I'm long, I put my stop below it. So if you got a stock, let's say you're taking overnight a stock, usually best way to do it is a 30 minute reversal. Look for a 30 minute reversal. That's what I'm probably going to do today. Of course, if depending on the market, how the market is going to start tomorrow, what's going to happen at the beginning, how far down Kera will start. Maybe it's not going to start down. Maybe it's going to start with the gap, gap up. I don't know. Uh, we'll see about that. But let's say if everything's normal. <laughs> I mean, what's normal trading? But let's say if everything's normal, then what am I going to do with, with it tomorrow? We'll see. <laughs> 
a donation to what? Philip is trying to get a donation for me. Is there a minimum number of uh, minutes that you wait before you put on trade, say three? I try to hold for the third minute, yeah. I mean, that would be the minimum, I mean, uh, for the third one minute candle. Um, that would, you know, very rarely at the second. For example, if Tesla would have moved down, then up on the second candle, and the second candle would have been up and down under the lows, I think very likely I would have taken it under the lows. I mean, very rare occasions. Usually the third, but I would definitely prefer it not to be the third. Like the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, somewhere near the range of the ten, first 10 minutes. Yeah, then, then of course you don't have a complete setup. That's that's all. That's that's why I prefer it to be later than the, than three minutes. You know, my biggest winners are the three minutes ones or the fourth minute reversal. These are probably my biggest winners, but they're also my biggest losers. So I I prefer waiting, but I don't always get to choose. You know. How do you decide which gappers to trade and which gappers not to trade? Uh, well, several reasons, you know, like a big gap, for example, if I today I concentrated on stocks that gap down 10, 12, 13, 20 percent, I concentrated on those because I had a lot of to, ch to choose from. But it's not that always I've got this to choose from. So usually the bigger the gap, the more interesting it becomes. So I would concentrate on those first. And then, of course, you know, the, the volume, the technical formation, and everything, so you just combine everything together and then you make a decision. You originally wanted to get under 234, but spiked down pre-market. Well, you see, I, I don't usually look at the pre-market. I don't usually look at the pre-market, but, um, well, I don't, not usually. I don't look at the pre-market, but that could be a different system and I'm not saying it's wrong. The slowest month, what would that be? You know, Carlos, yeah, the summer months are usually rather slow. Um, usually things are getting back to normal at around September, October, but more likely October. But depends, you know, sometimes you've got fantastic months and sometimes very slow. Well, yes, it's more likely to be slow now, starting now. I mean, everybody's on vacations, volume's down, but that depends on the market, depends on political situations, depends on a lot of things. You never know. If something comes up with China, with uh, North Korea, with Iran, with whatever, I mean, things could get very interesting in the summer too. If Tesla starts crashing down. I don't know, things could happen. Things could happen. Welcome, Raymond. Guys, I uh, appreciate the time you've been with me. Uh, we're done for the day. Uh, we're done for this session. Uh, thank you very much. It's all recorded. You can definitely take a look at it uh, uh, later if you think you want to you do that. Uh, Gabe just uh, wrote down his email. Thank you very much, Gabe. And um, um, looking forward to see you tomorrow in the trading room. Thank you guys for participating. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to join the TradeNet Trading Room for a free 14-day trial. TradeNet has educated more than 30,000 professional traders worldwide since 2004, and its trading room is one of the world's leading trading communities. Click here to start your free trial. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.